iniquity. And this is why I asked the church earlier, let's pray that we are obedient to God and that we continually try to help the less fortunate, that we continually try to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, shelter the homeless, that we continually reach out with the gospel of Jesus Christ and the love of Christ. Both of these men died. As you're going to do and as I'm going to do, should God tarry. You have an appointment with the death angel and I have an appointment with the death angel. But there's one thing, difference between me and, and, and some of you that are living in sin or that have never been born again. I have peace about the day that my death comes because I know that death has no hold on me. This old body is going to cease to breathe. This old body, and it was called fat a while ago, but this old big body is going to lay down one day. This old big body is going to lay down, but my soul is going to come out of the body. Now, my soul has a mouth. My soul has eyes. My soul has hands. It has every part, praise God, that I've got. And that soul is going to be escorted into, uh, into, into heaven with the Lord Jesus Christ into paradise. Paradise used to be beneath the earth, but now it's been moved up to heaven. And my soul is going to be escorted up there. And I'm going to ever be with the Lord. Wherever he goes, I'll go. I know that because the Word of God says it, and I know that I've been born again. But you that are born living in sin, you that are still out there in the world like I used to be, when you die, Luke 16 clearly says that the rich man was not righteous and that he opened his eyes in hell. Now, for all the Catholics out there, there's no purgatory. There's no holding place. And for all of you that are ignorant of the Word of God, you need to open your Bibles and study the Word. Because Paul said, I would not have you to be ignorant. You need to understand that when, when the death angel shows up, when death comes instantly, you either open your eyes before the Lord or you're going to open your eyes in hell. But your soul is going to still be there and it feels, it has feeling, it has consciousness. It, you can speak, you can talk. And, and the rich man and, and Lazarus died and the angels came and escorted his soul to be with the Lord. Abraham's bosom. And, and the rich man died and he opened his eyes in hell. Verse 23 of Luke 16. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torments and seeing, seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. He cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus. See, this rich man was used to getting his way. He was used to just commanding people to do what he wanted them to do. He said, send Lazarus over here, that old poor beggar, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water. So there must be water in hell to torment you even more. Can you imagine have you ever been so thirsty that you felt like your tongue was just going to swell up and burst and, and you had to have a drink of water, you just didn't think you could make it another moment, you were so thirsty? Wouldn't it be in torment, more torment to see cool water sitting there in a burning hell and you can't get over there to get a drink? And you're sitting there and you say, listen, now, he said, send Lazarus over here that he might, he didn't say, ask, he didn't ask for a cup of water. He said that he might dip his finger in it and touch it to my tongue and cool my tongue for I am in torment in this flame. Well, he just got to hell. He just got there, and he's already in torment. And so for some of you that don't believe, you're going to find out one day that this is real. And But you don't have to go to hell. You can. Jesus Christ paid the price and bought you a ticket to heaven. But what you have to do is call upon the name of the Lord. You have to, you have to, you have to accept Christ for what he's given. He gave his life that you could escape hell. And, and this, Abraham told the rich man, he said, listen, that's not going to happen. He said, first of all, I can't send Lazarus over there. While you were on earth, you had everything you wanted, but you didn't have time for church. You didn't have time for the gospel. You didn't have time for preaching. You'd rather go do what you wanted to do. And you, you, you satisfied your flesh. But Lazarus served the Lord. And while you were on earth, you got all your blessings down there. You were happy and comforted. And Lazarus suffered. But now in this life, Lazarus is comforted and you're suffering. And church, we may suffer here on this earth. Christians, you may go through some trials and tribulations here on this earth. But it's far better than going through the tribulations and torments of hell. And, and hell is real. 
And it says, where the worm dieth not. And the thing about it is, that same rich man, is this a true story? Yes, it is. Because Jesus Christ has never told a lie. He's the one telling the story. That rich man is still there today in torment. And he's going to be there until the day of judgment. He's going to be there until the day his soul comes up out of hell to stand before the white throne judgment. And then God is going to show him where he failed God, where he put himself before God. And then the angels are going to cast him into the lake of fire, where he's still going to live forever and ever and ever. You see, he felt torment. So you feel after you're dead, your soul is going to feel pain. Your soul is going to know people. It's going to be conscious. It's going to be able to talk. You're going to know what's going on. You're going to be able to see everything. And that's why we preachers preach so hard. It's not for our benefit. You see, I, a preacher preached to me, and I accepted Jesus Christ. And I, my fate is sealed. I know that I've been born again, and I've been sealed with the Holy Ghost of promise until the day that Jesus comes to redeem me. And there's no man that can break that seal. And I know that today and I'm this is why I'm preaching praise God to try to win the laws try to convince you sinners out there that you need to be born again now, I don't want to see you go to hell and right now if God's dealing with your heart and you know that there's sin in your life I want you to say this prayer and if you'll mean it in your heart the Lord will save your soul if he's drawing you to repentance father God I come before you today I have sin in my life and I ask you father to forgive my sins place them under the blood of Jesus for I do believe in my heart, and I'm confessing with my mouth that Jesus is the Son of God, and that you raised Him from the dead. This moment, I invite Jesus Christ to come into my heart, to be my Savior, to be Lord of my life. And I ask you, Father, to write my name in the Lamb's book of life and seal me with the Holy Ghost of promise until the day of redemption. For I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you were drawn by the Holy Spirit... If God let you realize that hell is real and you repented of your sins and you're truly sorry for the sins you've committed and you've asked Christ to forgive you, he just forgave you. He put every one of your sins under the blood. You need to get grounded in the Word of God, grounded in a good church. You need to be baptized and you need to serve the Lord. Dial the number on the screen and tell us. We'd love to send you some free literature. Pray for this ministry always. Support us when you can. And remember that Jesus is the answer around the world. God bless you. Answer